guys. Hope you're having a great Saturday night. Wanted to hop on. I felt like God dropped this um, word in my spirit tonight in a prayer time, and so I thought I would hop on and chat with you guys. I know it's a Saturday night, so there's probably quite a few people who are out and about kind of doing their own thing, so this might be one that people catch a little bit more on the replay, but I wanted to hop on and talk about this concept of can God trust you with the good? The good being those really good seasons in your life. The good being those those times that we really, really enjoy as a Christian, right? Those times that it just feels like we're refreshed, we're replenished. You know, those are the seasons that we just really like. Amen. Um, and so that's what I want to dig into a little bit tonight is can God trust us? You know, I think a lot of the times as Christians, um, it's so easy for us to press into God when there's hardship going on in our lives, when there's sickness in our bodies, when our finances are acting up, when our kids are going crazy, when our marriage is falling apart, when our job is doing crazy stuff, right? It's easy for us to run to God in those times, a lot of the times in our personal lives, but I think it can be so much harder sometimes to be faithful and to be consistent with pressing in to God when things are going well. A lot of the time. I think this is where a lot of people kind of fall off in their Christian walk is, you know, we we lose that dependency on God a lot of the time in seasons where things feel easy. Amen. And so that's what we're talking about tonight is just, can God trust us enough to still press into him when he gifts us with the blessing? You know, I really do feel like, and a lot of um, prophetic voices are saying this right now, that God is getting ready to to really promote some people in this season. Um, there's a lot of people who have been tested behind the scenes. There's a lot of people who you have really surrendered your life to God and he is getting ready to launch some people in this season. I really do feel like that's a thing, but God's got to know that he can trust you with the good times and the bad times and to continue to stay faithful in your walk with him, not just when things are falling apart, but will we continue to run to God with a passion um, during those times when we're just really feeling blessed, when things Things in our life are going super well. Amen. And so I want to talk about this and I want to also talk about the danger of idolatry in our personal lives. Amen. I think that's so important. So um, I want to give you guys an example um, of this concept at work. So right after 9-11, when, um, you know, terrorists hit, you know, the Twin Towers in the United States, that's a pretty um, a landmark occasion that a lot of people remember. What's interesting is churches right after that happened filled up like they hadn't in years. People were running to church. People were running to God for answers. People were really seeking God and it was such a tragic event that it shook people and it really rattled them and so all of a sudden out of nowhere all these churches were filled up. But the moment that life kind of returned to normal, all of that subsided right? A lot of people dropped out, a lot of people, and so it, it didn't last very long, so to speak, because it's easy for us to seek God when things are hard in our personal lives, amen? It's easy for us to seek God when it feels like everything is going wrong, but it's a lot... Um, harder for us to seek God when, you know, our lives feel great because it can be so tempting for us to learn to rely on ourselves in those seasons rather than continuing to stay dependent upon God. So I want to talk to you guys a little bit tonight about the story of Abraham and his son Isaac. And you guys are familiar with this story, a lot of you. But what's so cool about Abraham and Isaac is... Um, you guys remember this backstory. You know, God spoke to Abram. He was Abram at the time when God spoke to him, right? His name had not changed yet. He said, you're going to be the father of many nations. I'm going to do all this cool stuff through your life. And, you know, he made him a promise and he said, you're going to have a kid one day. And it's going to come through your wife, whose name was Sarai at the time, right? It was later changed to Sarah. Um, and he made this big promise to Abram, right? Well, you know, fast forward a few years and they're getting older right? And so Abram and Sarah, 
you know, or Sarai, were getting a little bit discouraged. They'd been waiting on this promise from God for a long, long time. You know, they hadn't seen any fruit in the natural behind this thing. And they, I'm sure they were going, God, where are you? What's going on with all of this, right? And so what they did was they tried to take matters into their own hands. And Sarai went and she was like, you know what? Um, I want you to, you know, sleep with my maidservant and I'm just going to make this try to happen my own way, right? How many of you guys know whenever we try to intervene and make things happen our own way instead of waiting on God's plan, we can really mess things up, right? And so uh, they were discouraged and so they did just that. And so they put their hands on this situation. There ended up being a child that was born. Um, it was not the promised child, right? It was not the child that God had promised them and it ended up causing a lot of heartache. In their personal life, right? But God was still faithful to them. He still promised them their son, Isaac, that was going to be the promised child. And so they had to wait a bit. You know, the consequences of that sin had to wear off a little bit. But then finally, after all these years of praying, after all these years of believing and faith, they ended up having a child, right? They ended up having um, Isaac. And so we hear about this in the story. If you guys look in Genesis 22, it gives a breakdown on the excerpt that I'm about to pop into tonight. And it's talking about how Abraham was tested. So where I bring this back into our topic of conversation tonight, what I put as the subject of this is, can God trust you with the good? And that's talking about the good seasons in our lives, right? And so we have to be very, very careful before God can trust us with more to make sure that we do not have idols in certain areas of our life. Amen. Because if it's an idol, you guys, it's not good and it isn't a good gift to us in our personal lives. And there will always be a test after you step into a season of promise where God will look at your life and where he will look at your circumstances and he will say, can I trust you with the good? Can I trust you with these gifts that I have given you? Can I trust that you're still going to keep me in first place when your life isn't falling apart, when the bank account isn't at zero, when your health isn't having a crisis, when the kids aren't going crazy, can I trust you to still keep me first in your personal life? And idols are sneaky little things, you guys. They can creep in in all different kinds of areas of our lives. I like to think and keep myself in check this way and go, Jill, an idol is anything in your life that you're putting above God anything in your life. So it could be an idol in your life could be food. An idol in your life could be um, a boyfriend, girlfriend. An idol in your life could be overspending. It could be, I mean, you name it. It could be anything under the sun, you guys. Um, but when God gifts you with blessing in your life, maybe he has gifted you with a child. Maybe he has gifted you with a promotion. Maybe he has gifted you, you know, with a sphere of influence in some place, right? But he's got to know, can I trust this person or is this thing an idol? Because if it's an idol, you guys, it can end up taking you down in the process. And he doesn't want that. He wants you to be able to enjoy the good gifts that he wants to give you in your, in your life. But he knows the only way that he can do that is if he stays in first place. And so we see a lot of the time in our personal lives that we will run to God when things are hard, but so many people, their prayer lives fall off the map. As soon as they hit a season where it feels more comfortable, they feel like they can just kind of coast through. We become very self-reliant in those seasons. And so here's what God does. Faith has to be tested. You guys know that from the Bible, right? And so Abraham has just received this gift that he has worked worked and prayed for and just so many years of waiting and waiting and waiting and then the test comes. Isn't that interesting, you guys, how the test came after the promise was received? Amen. God was testing him to see, can he keep this? Can I really trust him with this good thing that I'm about to send into his life? And I'm going to say it again. I believe for so many people in this season, God is wanting to promote them. God is wanting to bring them into new things, to give them new levels of responsibility, new levels of leadership, new levels of destiny that he is wanting to break forth in your life on a, um, you know, on a work level, on a personal level, you guys, on a spiritual level, even he's wanting to elevate so many people in this season and he's needing to know can I trust you to not have idols in your life can I trust you to still seek me in these good seasons after you've received the promise can I trust you to know that it didn't happen because of you it happened because of me it happened for 
God's glory that you were promoted it and it didn't just come from your effort you know it can be so sneaky the devil can try to sneak this stuff in and he can try to make you believe that it was all you nah you guys it's God and we've got to know where our foundation comes from with all of this and so in Genesis 22 this is the part of the story where Abraham was tested. Isaac was just born. God let him enjoy the promise for just a little bit, but then it was time for the test because his faith needed to be tested and God needed to know, can I trust you to continue to steward this great promise that I've brought into your personal life? And so let's pick up reading in Genesis 22, verse 1. It says, Sometime later, God tested Abraham. He said to him, Abraham, here I am, he replied. Then God said, Take your son your only son whom you love Isaac and go to the region of Moriah sacrifice him there as a burnt offering on a mountain that I will show you okay can you imagine as a parent I can't even imagine what this would be like to hear from God so clearly for this thing that you have worked and prayed for for years you know Abraham was over a hundred years old at this point you guys context okay he was not a young fella anymore all right and God is telling him okay I want you to go and I want you to sacrifice your son this is huge you guys and so think about how easy it would have been for Isaac to become an idol because of how long he worked and he prayed and he really believed for this thing right so easy but watch what Abraham did okay Verse 3, early the next morning, Abraham got up and loaded his donkey. He took with him two of his servants and his son Isaac. When he had cut enough wood for the burnt offering, he set out for the place that God had told him about. On the third day, Abraham looked up and saw the place in the distance. He said to his servant, stay here with the donkey while I and the boy go over there. We will worship and then we'll come back to you. Abraham took the wood for the burnt offering and placed it on his son Isaac and he himself carried the fire and the knife as the two of them went on together Isaac spoke up and said to his father Abraham father yes my son Abraham replied the fire and wood are here Isaac said but where is the lamb for the burnt offering can you guys imagine as a parent if you were in Abraham's shoes in that moment and your kid said where's the offering because you've got to imagine Isaac is probably pretty used to this routine by this point right I imagine that these are some godly people Abraham and Sarah and they probably were teaching their kids up in the ways of the Lord and so he probably knew how this whole routine worked right we present the offering you know it's usually a lamb a ram something we're gonna present this at the top and so I'm sure kiddo was looking around and he was going okay dad where's offering this is a little different from normal and can you imagine Abraham's heart and how it must have felt to look at that kid and to say God will provide the offering what a faith step what a tremendous amount of emotion Abraham must have been going through in that moment let's continue okay all right um, when they, this is verse nine, when they reached the place God had told him about, Abraham built an altar there and arranged the wood on it. He bound his son Isaac and laid him on the altar on top of the wood. Then he reached out his hand and took the knife to slay his son. Okay, let's pause there for a second. All right. So Abraham had every intention of following through and slaying his son Isaac wow you guys talk about dedication talk about a life of surrender to the Lord if you're a parent you guys know there is no way you could even fathom something like that if you're a parent your kids are everything to you right look at what a surrendered lifestyle that Abraham had and so remember God was testing him after he had already received the good he was testing to make sure Abraham is this thing going to be an idol in your life and can you keep this thing can you sustain this thing in your personal life and can I trust you with this so watch what happens all right let's keep going this is verse 12 uh, actually, let's start in verse 11. It says, But the angel of the Lord called out to him from heaven, Abraham, Abraham, here I am, he replied. Do not lay a hand on the boy, he said. Do not do anything to him. Now I know that you fear God because you have not withheld from me your son, your only son. 
Abraham looked up, and there in a thicket, he saw a ram caught by its thorns. Okay, I just love this part. I absolutely love it. So because of Abraham's obedience and being willing to surrender this part of his life that was so important to him, that was the biggest part of his life, because of his obedience and saying, you know what, God, you gave me this good thing. You gave me the promise in my life, but I choose in this moment not to idolize this thing. I choose in this moment to still say that you are greater, that you are stronger in my personal life than this thing that I so love and that I have so prayed for, for years and years and years on end. And what I love about the end of this verse is the angel not only stopped Abraham and said, don't sacrifice him, but he also provided the replacement. Amen. How many of you guys know that when you surrender any area of your life to God. He is so faithful to even give you back what you thought you were going to lose. Amen. And I just think that this is such a beautiful picture of God's faithfulness in our personal lives. Abraham was making a bold statement with his willingness to sacrifice his son. He was saying, God, you can trust me with good seasons. You can trust me with promotion in my personal life. You can trust me that I will come running to your altar day after day after day. Not only when the bank account is going crazy, not only when I'm having marriage issues, not only when my kids are going crazy, not only when I'm sick as a dog, but you can trust me that even when times are good, you're going to be number one. You're going to be in first place in my personal life. And so God provides for Abraham. Not only does he get to keep the promise, but God sends the provision that he needs for that current moment in his personal life. Amen. And so this ram comes, verse 13. Abraham looked up, and there in the thicket he saw a ram caught by its thorns. He went over and took the ram and sacrificed it as a burnt offering instead of his son. So Abraham called the place, The Lord Will Provide. And to this day, it is said, On the mountain of the Lord, it will be provided. Okay? So it's really, really cool that God's provision broke forth in a great way in his life because of his surrender, you guys. So all of that to say, I want to ask you guys a question tonight. Can God trust you with the good seasons and the bad seasons in your personal life? You know, I used that example of 9-11 earlier in the live. You know, um, we talked about how people right after 9-11 ran to churches. The churches were overflowing for the first time in years right after after that tragic day happened and it's because people were overwhelmed they were looking for answers and I want to tell you guys that it's easy to run to God when everything's falling apart in our personal lives but can he trust you with promotion I think so often we hold ourselves back from promotion and from those good seasons that God longs to bring into our personal lives because we start to go into coasting mode we start to go into this mode of well I can handle it on my own God you know and we still acknowledge God we still say the name Yahweh, we are still, you know, cruising through our life. But are we truly on our knees every day in complete and total surrender to Christ? Even on those days where we wake up and we've got money in the bank account, you know, people in our lives are not fighting with each other, things are going good with our jobs, all of that fun stuff, you guys. And so even after you receive the giftings that God wants to bring you in this season, because I really do think this is a season of promotion, I've just been feeling this in my spirit that God is going to be begin to move in some people's lives in this season. But we've got to be so careful, you guys, to guard our hearts when the promotion hits and to be willing to have an Abraham-like stance in our personal lives of God, even when I get the gift, even when I get this big breakthrough that I've been believing for in my health, even when I receive this stuff, my dependency on you is not going to change in this season. I will still know who my source is and where my joy comes from, where my provision comes from. And regardless, if you choose to take it all away tomorrow, God, you're still number one in my personal life. So I'll leave you guys with that tonight. Hope you guys have a great night. I'll talk to you soon.